Here's lesson three for the 3D snake game, moving within the arena. We want to get ourselves to this point where the snake is the right size and it moves along the grid like this. And it can never escape the grid. If it collides with the face, then the game will stop. Like that. Um, I'm reloading. And also, if you hold the shift key down, it goes three times as fast. That's a nice little feature. Okay, let's see how we did that. Here's the diff, the changes between lesson two code and lesson three code. And now we have this concept of when it's time to make the next move. And uh, there's a speed for that. So the number of milliseconds per move is 1,000. You saw it moving at one, one second per move. When I held down the shift key, it went three times as fast. And I've changed the way the key mappings works. There's a variable for that. Uh, last time I forgot to create the arena width here, so that's that. I've renamed dir to direction. And here's the next move time. That's a variable that's used to figure out when it's time to, to move again. We could use frame rate to slow things down, but eventually we're going to have smooth movement, not the jumps from cell to cell. Um, okay, so what's changed in setup to avoid the horizontal scroll bar? I did something here. Um, this is the rename of the dir to direction. I changed the proportion of the um, canvas that's occupied by the arena and eliminated this structure here, this object. That's how we used to map. Um, you'll see the new one uh, down a bit. And then here, creating the position, I moved down to here. I moved it down to here because I wanted to use this rightmost cell center so that when you, um, just for now, the snake appears in the front so you can see very clearly that it is, in fact, moving along those cell boundaries. I added this call to map keys. We'll take a look at that in a bit. Then in draw, this section of the code from here down to here has to do with moving, and we only want to move at the right time. So we check and see if the time now is greater than the time that the next move is allowed. And if it is, then we, we find the position where the new head of the snake is going to be. And then we check to see if that position would be outside the arena. And we'll look at the um, new position would leave arena function later. And if it would leave, then we'd call no loop, which just for now makes the program stop. And if it wouldn't leave, then we do, we add the new head pause, and then we set the new, the next move time based on um, if the speed up key is down, then we make next move time nearer in the future than we do if the key is not down. Uh, the box, the snake used to be 50 units on an edge and now it's nine tenths of the cell width. Okay, so the position is a vector. We can turn it into an array and then check to see if every element of the array matches a predicate here. So we want to know whether every coordinate, x, y, and z, in the position, whether the absolute value of it is less than half the arena width. And if that's true, it's within the arena. Um, so then we negate that. And by negating it, we give it the meaning would leave arena. So what I've done is abstracted away, I've added another layer of, of indirection between the actual keys that you push and the vectors um, with names. 
So if, so you can read this like W means go away, and S means come towards, and arrow left means go left, and so on. And then these things are vectors containing the directions along the three axes, um, or zero, to travel. Okay, so this way, because um, I use a Dvorak keyboard layout, so W and S don't do me any good. Uh, for example, here's my key where the W is. Here's my key where the S is. So I might set them like this. Or I might set them with uh, page up and page down. That works pretty well. Anyway, that's, this gives a more flexible way to remap the keys because you just have to look at these. You don't have to try to figure out from these vectors which one we're, we're talking about. Okay, to key pressed. Okay, so we have the key mappings for the key. That's the requested direction. Um, and we want to make sure that we don't allow reversing the direction. So back in here, I'm going to reload. I can press left, but you're not allowed to go back the same direction uh, that you came from because you ha usually will have a tail, and so you can't go over yourself. So what this does is it finds the opposite of the current direction by multiplying the direction vector by minus one. That, so that gives a vector in the opposite direction. And then we see whether the, whether the requested um, direction is the opposite of the current direction. And if it's not, then we allow it and we set the direction to the requested direction. And then here we also, um, this is where we initialize next move time. So the first time you press a key, next move time is not defined. And so this sets it to now, so that we move right away. Okay, I think that's everything, so see you next time.